Welcome to God Loves the LGBTQ Plus Community. I'm Pastor Chester Hitchcock, and today I want to tell you about the five love languages for those who are LGBTQ Plus. Many people have discovered that understanding these five basic love languages have deepened and strengthened their relationship tremendously. In this video, you will learn those five basic love languages and how they apply to those who are LGBTQ. Let me begin with a simple phrase that those who are LGBTQ love to use. Love is love. In other words, the love that an LGBTQ plus person has for someone is the same kind of love that a cisgender person has for someone. Love is love. In my other videos, I cover the Bible passages that are commonly used to clobber those in the LGBTQ plus community, and I demonstrate that the Bible is not homophobic as many have believed it to be. And if you haven't discovered that, you really should watch those videos when this one is finished. But in this video, I want to explain the five love languages and show how they are just as useful for those who are LGBTQ as for those who are cisgender. Keep in mind that I'm only giving an abbreviated summary of each language, and if you want to look into it deeper, you can Google the book and find it on Amazon. It's titled The Five Love Languages. The author is Dr. Gary Chapman. And Chapman has a Doctor of Philosophy degree from Southwestern Baptist Theological Seminary. But also keep in mind that the book is clearly written for cisgender couples, and I'm not sure if the author would agree to applying his book to those who are LGBTQ+. Nevertheless, since love is love, LGBTQ people have a right to enjoy all of the aspects of love, including understanding the five basic love languages. Here they are, and not necessarily found in the order that you will find them in the book. The first love language is words of affirmation. The second is acts of service. The third language is physical touch. The fourth is gifts. And the fifth is quality time together. Now let's spend a little time with each one of these languages and notice how they all fit into the love is love theme. Do you remember what the first one was? Words of affirmation. Notice how basic this is. Regardless of gender or gender identity, regardless of who we love, we all like to hear words of affirmation. We love to be complimented on who we are and what we do and how we look and complimenting the one that you love is love. And there's that phrase, love is love. We can get very creative with our compliments, but first of all, be sure to compliment them to their face. Look them in the eye when you do. Second, sometimes compliment them in front of others. There's nothing like being complimented in front of others. Also send them a compliment via text or email or even send them a card in the mail even if you live together. Put a note on their pillow or a note on the fridge and don't forget to be an active listener. In other words, try not to interrupt and show sincere and true interest in what they are interested in. There's a lot that can be said about words of affirmation and I'm sure that you can see that this love language is not gender bias. Are you ready for the second love language? Do you remember what it was? The second love language is acts of service. Now, there are many things that people in love can do to perform acts of service for the other. What kind of things do you find yourself doing day after day? Don't you really appreciate it when the one that you love steps in to help? Sometimes it's just simple things like housework or yard work and Sometimes you need to be a little more creative or just take the car out and, and surprise them by getting it washed or running some errands. Uh, other times it might be simple things like just getting them a glass of water or mixing them a special drink or a smoothie or making them a sandwich or shining their shoes. What kind of things do you just love to have done for you? 
do that for the one that you love because love is love. The love language number three is physical touch. Now, for certain, that would include sex. But physical touch cannot be limited just to the time that we spend making love. Love is love. Physical touch can be erotic, but that must be appropriate to the time and place and those who are around. But physical touch doesn't have to be erotic. It can also be holding hands or touching the face or hair or a hand on the shoulder or a hand on the back or brushing past them in the hall or in the doorway. Kissing. Kissing is so important. A gentle kiss before going to work or a kiss at night before going to sleep or passionate kissing that is not just during lovemaking. But certainly don't let time, busyness, or familiarity reduce the sexual activity. There is a connection there that is unlike any other connection in the relationship. The fourth love language is gifts. This doesn't mean that you have to always be spending money that you don't have. Gifts can be handmade and simple. Gifts can be inexpensive and fun. Gifts are just a way of saying, I was thinking about you today. And most of all, make sure you give thoughtful gifts. This requires taking time to know what they really like. It can be as simple as picking up their favorite Starbucks coffee on the way home, or their favorite donut from the donut shop. It doesn't have to be expensive, but it helps knowing their favorites, be it coffee or donuts or Panera bread souffles. Also be certain to express gratitude when receiving gifts. Don't just say thanks, but at least say thanks. And the fifth love language is quality time. Sometimes it might be an extravagant vacation. Sometimes it might be a weekend getaway. But most of the time, it's just part of our daily routine. Take walks together. Keep a bird list together. Give a foot rub or a massage. Many couples are starving for quality time together because they are too busy making a living. And when this happens, the relationship suffers. Every day there should be at least a little time where the couple can spend together in a quality sense. And once a week there should be a day where at least a large portion of that day is committed to each other. Love requires time, and love is love. This love language, just like the other four, transcends gender identity. Dr. Gary Chapman then explains how every person has what he calls a primary love language. And it's not that difficult to discover the primary love language of the person that you love. Notice what they seem to do for you. Are they always giving you words of affirmation? They may not even know it themselves, but it's probably because they enjoy receiving words of affirmation. Are they always doing acts of service for you? Well, it's probably because they enjoy having acts of service done for them. Are they always touching or kissing or wanting to hold hands? Well, possibly their primary love language is that of physical touch. Are they always giving gifts or always looking for quality time together? Notice the primary love language and learn to speak it well. Chapman takes a lot of time in his book about the importance of knowing the primary love language. But if there was one thing that I felt that the book lacked, it would be the importance of being intentional about maintaining all five of the love languages. It's really not that hard. For example, if your primary love language is words of affirmation and your lover has learned that and is always speaking that love language to you but seldom expresses any physical touch except during lovemaking that seems to decrease more and more over time, then you're going to miss that love language of physical touch that is as much a part of who you are as what you consider to be your primary love language. Perhaps Chapman would agree to add that to his next edition. I do not have a doctorate in philosophy, but I did minor in psychology with a focus on pastoral counseling. 
and over the years I did a lot of counseling regarding relationships, including that of same-sex couples. Love is love, and all five love languages are important to your own psyche, as well as the one that you love. Primary is just that. It is primary. In fact, and, and I love this word, it is also inclusive. Our primary love language is inclusive. It is not exclusive. It's not the only love language for you. Your, my primary love language is indeed inclusive. It is a part of who we are, part of the whole picture. So commit these five love languages to memory or write them down and put them on the fridge or put them in your wallet or your purse. Whatever you have to do, love is love regardless of gender or gender identity. And if you make it your goal to speak these languages fluently with the one that you love, you will truly be the one who is blessed because true love reciprocates. And couples who are intentional about their relationship nurture one another on every level. I hope that you have enjoyed this video. And if you find it helpful, give me a thumbs up. And if you have not subscribed to my channel yet, be sure to hit that subscribe button, ring the bell, and choose all so that you can get a notification the next time that a video is produced. God bless, love you all, and God loves you all the more. I'll see you in the next video.